subscribe to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my November TBR. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just always have so many books I want to read and like November is going to be such a busy month for me because like I'm going to be stressed from work because it's a quarterly billing period and we're introducing a new billing cycle and then there's Thanksgiving so we're going to be going and visiting my in-laws and there's there's so much um and there's so many books I want to read. October has been an amazing reading month but I don't think I can do as amazing as a job in November so my TBR is quite big again these are books uh some of them carried over from October because I I believe by the end because right now it's the 29th of October. I should be able to read 20-ish books, but two for sure I'm not going to be able to get to from my October TBR, and then the others, there might be one or one, one and a half that might carry over still, because I'm currently in the middle of an audiobook, and I'll be finishing one book today and starting another one, and then that leaves me with three more books to read in the next two days. So I don't know if it's gonna happen or not. First, let's go over to the books that are for sure gonna be carrying over from October, which I figured this was gonna happen. Uh, but the first book will be The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake, which that's, November I feel is more like dark academia month. So I think it will be perfect that I'll be reading this in November. And then I'm so sad I didn't get to this one because I think this is gonna be another five star read. Uh, but that's Slaying the Vampire Conqueror by Carissa Broadbent, so I sadly did not get to this one. But I feel like this one I could read any time of the year. It doesn't have to necessarily be, like, spooky, dark academia, like, time frame. The carryover books will be my priority for November, so this will definitely get read in November. And then there are a few releases in November that I'm excited about. The first one is Powerless. This is coming out November 7th. I am super excited. Barnes & Noble is having like an exclusive edition or a special edition of this. So I'll be going on November 7th to pick this up and get it. This is, I think it's a YA fantasy about some girl without power who has to like participate in a game with a whole bunch of powers. So it's kind of like giving the serpent in the wings of night vibe. And I've heard amazing things. I think there's only been one person that I've watched their book review of it say that it wasn't really for them, but like everyone else has been obsessed. So I'm excited for it. I'll be getting that one. And then of course, Iron Flame is coming out in November. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it. I do have it pre-ordered, so I will be getting it. I just don't know if I'm going to actually be able to read it. It might have to wait till next year. And then Check It Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I have this pre-ordered too. I will for sure be reading this in November because everything Allie Hazelwood I will read. I love Allie Hazelwood. She is my favorite romance author. And so Check It Mate is actually her YA debut and I believe it's about two high schoolers that fall in love over chess. And I believe they're like in chess competitions. I think it's supposed to be like um, the Queen's Gambit type of vibe. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And then three of the Manwa series that I'm reading are, I'll have volumes coming out in November. So True Beauty is coming out November 7th. That's uh, volume three. This one I probably won't get as soon as it comes out because Barnes & Noble, well at least my Barnes & Noble, doesn't have the hardcovers in store. You have to buy them online. When I place my Barnes & Noble like big order at the end of the month, I think I'm going to order it then. Uh, but True Beauty is a manhwa about this girl who isn't that pretty and she gets picked on for it and then one day she discovers that you can use makeup and different things to make yourself look nice and so she does this and I think goes off to high school or goes to a different school and all of a sudden she's popular and everyone thinks she's gorgeous and then she has two guys who are interested in her and it's I love it so much it's so good villains are destined to die volume 5 comes out November 21st I will be going on release day to come and get that manhwa uh, I've been talking about this one a lot on my channel but it's about the it's an isekai about this girl who ends up in this otome game where she has to get basically all these guys to like her and or fall in love with her so that they don't kill her and it's gorgeous artwork. I it's it's probably the prettiest manhwa slash manga that I own. It's gorgeous. And then the third one is a 
business proposal number three and it comes out November 21st. So I'll probably also be getting that on the same day as no one's suggesting to die. A business proposal is about this girl who pretends to be her friend on like this uh, prospective wedding date and the guy that she goes on this date with is her CEO and she doesn't realize it. <laughs> And he doesn't have time to go on all these dates that his grandfather wants him to go on. So he decides the first girl he goes on a date with, he's going to marry, which ends up being this girl. And so he's like pursuing her while she's trying to hide the identity of who she is <laughs> and like get away from him. And then her best friend also has like a little romance going on with his assistant. And it's just so cute. There's also a K-drama on Netflix for a business proposal. There's also a K-drama for True Beauty. I don't know which site it's available on, but it's amazing. It's the best K-drama I've ever seen. It's one of my favorite TV shows. It's great. I highly recommend it. So those are all the books that I currently don't own that are on this list. Now let's go over the rest of the books that I want to read in November. So I just got my first bookish box and in it was Court of the Undying Seasons by A.M. Strickland. And Oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I love this book. I love the look of it. I don't know if I actually like the book yet. But this is a vampire story. I'll just read like the first little snippet. It says, When 19-year-old Finn volunteers to take her secret love's place in their village's finding, she is terrified. Those who are chosen at the finding are whisked away to Castle Court's Heart, a vampire school where human students either succeed and become vampires fail and spend the rest of their lives as human thralls or they don't survive long enough to become either and of course there's there's more but that's like the gist it's a vampire school like yes please i am so excited to read this i'm so happy that i finally have it i will hopefully read this one in november it's also not that big it's less than 400 pages so it's not that long i'm super excited to read this i'm so happy i finally have it in my hands <laughs> Then I would also like to get to Foxglove by Adeline Grace. This is the sequel to Belladonna. And Belladonna has kind of, I guess since it came out last fall, has kind of been like very popular and a lot of people talk about it. But it is a kind of gothic romance about this girl, Signa, who can't die. And she's an orphan and she's kind of been passed around from her different family members. And they all end up, like, dead. And then she goes to live with, like, I think it's a distant relative. And, like, her aunt has recently died. And she thinks that the aunt was murdered. So she works with death to kind of figure out who killed her. And also help her cousin from not dying. Because her cousin's being poisoned. So I did really like the first book. I wasn't, like, blown away by it. But I did find it very interest interesting. And I want to see where the story goes. So I'm hoping to be able to read this one in November. And then for my book club, Happily Ever Afters, we've been reading the Kingdoms of Sand and Sky trilogy. So this is the third and final book, The King Will Kill You. The first book was The Princess Will Save You. And it is a retelling or reimagining of The Princess Bride. And it was so good. It was uh, one of my favorite reads of September. I also really liked the second book. I didn't like the second book as much because it was more like politics heavy, but the first book, oh, it was so good. And it, it, it's like a gender reversal roles. So the stable boy gets kidnapped and the princess has to go and save him. And oh, it's so cute. It's so, oh, I love it so much. Uh, so I'm really interested to see how the story wraps up. I will say though, uh, the third book uh, is not the same paperback as the first two books so it's smaller and shorter than the other books so they don't match and I am angry at tour teen for that shame on them but hopefully the story is still good <laughs> and then I'm definitely going to be reading Edgar Allan Poe and the London Monster by Karen Lee Street this is the first book in the a Poe and Dupin mystery trilogy I think I bought all three books earlier this year like in the springtime and I wanted to try to read this during October but none of my spookopoly roles really worked for this but I definitely want to get the first book read this year and in December I'm only going to be reading a very small amount of books because I want to focus on reading manga because I haven't my goal is to read one manga series a year or no, I mean sorry one manga series a month 
And I started out really good, but there's been so many novels that I want to read and so many good releases this year that the manga has kind of gotten pushed to the side. So in December, I want to kind of make it up and just read as many like manga as I can. I want to definitely get this read this year. Basically in this, if you didn't know, Edgar Allan Poe wrote mystery stories, short stories about Auguste Dupin. And in this, it's posing what if Poe, if Dupin was actually a real person and him and Poe like teamed up to solve mysteries together. Yes, please. Uh, I am so excited. I tend to like Poe stories more when they are written in like Poe's writing style. So I'm hoping that's the case with this. I'm super excited and I cannot wait to read this one. I want to read Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor. This is a companion novel or I think it's more of a novella to the Daughter and Smoke a Bone trilogy. I actually, uh, Libby has the audiobook for this to listen to and on two times speed it's going to be like an hour and a half so I'll definitely get this listened to in November. But I believe this is just about um, Susanna and Mick and like a little date that they go on, I think. So it's just like a really cute, sweet story. Oh wow, the text is like really big and there's lots of pictures and things in it. So that's why it's so short. Maybe I'll just have to flip through the pictures once I'm done listening to it. But I'm excited to read this one. And then this is another one I kind of wanted to get on my October TBR, but it just didn't work. And that is Forest Fall by Lyndall Clipstone. This, I believe, is the sequel in the Lake's Edge duology. And I really liked Lake's Edge. It wasn't as good as I thought it was because let me tell you, Lake's Edge, the cover for that book is the prettiest cover I've ever seen on a book. It is the most, oh, it's gorgeous. I love it. This cover, not so much. I, I don't like this cover. Here's the original cover. Absolutely gorgeous. Like all my gothic dreams made real in that cover right there. But the first book was basically about this brother and sister who are orphans and the brother has some type of magical ability. And this noble who is rumored to have killed his whole family wants the brother to come to help him with something. And she's like, no, he's not coming unless I can come with him. So she ends up going to this manor that everyone kind of thinks is cursed and well, it kind of learns more about the power that her brother has and also that this noble has and like at the end she's kind of i forget if she agrees or if she's captured to be stuck in the place that she is i'm not gonna tell you where she is because it would kind of ruin it but uh yeah she's basically left all alone somewhere at the end but i don't i think it was her choice i think she did it to save her brother she agreed to stay there I'm sure I'll remember as I'm reading this. It was really good and there was like a romantic relationship between our girl main character and the noble and I believe also she um, is demisexual so she's only sexually attracted to people that she has an emotional connection to. Um, so there's that representation in this. But yeah I'm looking forward to see how the story wraps up. And then Strange on Early Things by Kelly Kriog. This is her most recent release. I believe this came out in August. And this is like a retelling of Jane Eyre, which I did read Jane Eyre earlier this year. Didn't really like it, but Kelly Kriog did write the Nevermore trilogy, which is one of my favorite trilogies ever. I absolutely love that one, but it's uh, like inspired by Edgar Allan Poe, which I love. Jane Eyre I didn't love, so we'll see how this goes. But I believe this has to do with like a psychic named Jane. Oh, she's a psychic artist. And then she receives an invitation to the English Manor Fairfax Hall to take part in an investigation of the property that requires her area of expertise. And when she meets this guy, Elias uh, Thornfield, who is the elusive proprietor of this the estate. And then there's a telepath, a psychic influencer, so there's some other people with some uh, supernatural abilities. And then it immediately becomes clear to all of them that something is amiss at Fairfax. Something having to do with Elias and the sinister activity taking place around the manor. Turning to her art to unravel the mystery, Jane is shocked to find that her talents and her growing affection for Elias could be the king to key to saving him from a horrible fate. So it sounds interesting. On the back is the letter that Elias sends to Jane, inviting her to the mansion, which is interesting. This cover is also very good. 
I don't think this book has gotten very good reviews. So I don't have high hopes, but I'm going to give it a try. And hopefully I really, really like it. Because her Phantom Heart book was good, but I didn't like who she ended up with. And it did feel very similar to Nevermore. So hopefully this doesn't have the same vibes. Because I want to see like what else she can do. What else she can come up with. And I've been hearing great things about this book. And I also need to get some more Book of the Month books read. Because if you're a member of Book of the Month, there's actually like reading goals. And I'm behind. I've completed one reading goal. But the other two I haven't. And last year I didn't forget complete my Book of the Month reading goals. So I'm hoping to this year. So I want to read The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I have heard very, very good things about this one. I think this is another one I'm able to get an audiobook for on Libby. But basically this author who wrote, I think it was this famous children's series, has written a next book and there's only one copy. And he has invited, I guess like his top fans to come and compete for this one copy of his book. And our main lady La Lucy wants to adopt one of her students. But of course it's very costly so she's hoping to win this competition so she can adopt this little boy um i heard it has like willy wonka vibes it's you know it's kind of like magical and yeah i've just heard really good things so i'm excited to read this one i think it will be fun for november if not november i'll probably carry it over into december because it also like december's like whimsy magical like vibes like you know your childhood different stuff so this might also be a good one to read in december then I have another Dark Academia themed book that I'm wanting to read, which is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. It's also a book of the month one. And I believe this is about a secret society? Deeply researched, lushly told, and thrillingly paced, The Cloisters explores the shimmering line between what is real and what is imagined, the magical melding of the modern and the arcane, and the power we have to defy what is written in the stars and to shape our own fates. Okay. I don't really want to know more than that. This is another like really short book. Most of these are pretty short. But I believe this ha is like a dark academia story that has something to do with tarot. I wasn't going to read it at first, but then I decided to get it and give it a try. So we'll see how I feel about it. And then I also want to read Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Canes. So in October, I had you all choose between Masters of Death by Olivia Blake or Vampires of El Norte and Masters of Death 1. So that means I'm now reading this one for November. Because uh, I did want to get both of them read and they were both vampire stories. And it actually kind of works out well that way because that way, because I'm reading the Outlet's Paradox now in November. I'm not reading two Olivia Blake books in the same month. But this, is, this says vampires and vaqueros face off on the Texas-Mexico border in the supernatural western from the author of the Hacienda. So I believe our two main characters kind of were like, had a thing for each other or was in a relationship. And the guy thought that the girl ended up dying or getting killed, but she's actually alive. And so I think they team up with these vaqueros to fight the vampires is my assumption. I haven't really heard much about this book. Like a lot of people bought it and were talking about it, but I haven't really heard that many reviews or anything. I personally thought the Hacienda was okay. So I'm giving her another chance to see if she can do vampires well. We'll I'll find out. Okay, another book I want to read is Malice House by Megan Shepherd. I read earlier this year her the Madman Daughters trilogy, and I really like that series. And they have this one available on Kindle Unlimited, so it's kind of been sitting. I borrowed it, and it's just been sitting there for a while. I was trying to get it onto my October TBR, and it didn't work out. So I want to get that read in November. I believe it's about a girl who goes to a haunted house or something. I'm not really clear. It's just Megan Shepard wrote it. It's another, I think, like, gothic-themed story, and I want to read it. That's all I know. That's all I care. This is another one I'm probably for sure going to be reading in November because I've been wanting to read it for a while now. Another one, The Mysteries of Udolfo by Anne Radcliffe. I've never read anything by Anne Radcliffe. She's a very popular gothic writer. And I had this book, or I have it, on my 23 books to read in 2023. So I want to get this done, and I feel like November would be the perfect time to read it. Again, it's also on Kindle Unlimited, so I already borrowed it. I don't remember what this was about either. I just know it's a, it's a famous gothic story written by Anne Radcliffe and I wanted to get one of her books read this year so I'm reading it 
And yeah, that's everything. That is everything that I want to try to get read in November. I really hope I can do it. I've been prioritizing listening to audiobooks instead of having like YouTube playing in the background. So hopefully if I continue to do that and enough of these are on audiobooks, like available through Libby, I might be able to get them all read. We'll see what happens. But let me know, are you planning on reading any of these books in November? Or have you read any of them and you're hoping that I prioritize, you know, one of these books or multiple of these books in November? Uh, please let me know. What are you reading for November? If you're not reading any of these or you haven't, like, what are you planning on reading in November? If you like this video, please like and also subscribe. And I hope you have a wonderful good day or night, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!